is big story number one. Big story number two is that Kate Steinle's killer was acquitted yesterday on charges of murder. Uh, it, the, the facts of the case, I, I want to give you the entire facts of the case so that you know what the jury may or may not have been doing. So let's begin with what exactly happened. Sarah Rumpf has a very good piece over at Red State talking about what exactly happened in this case. So you recall that during the campaign, the Kate Stanley case came up over and over. Beautiful young woman who was killed on a San Francisco pier by an illegal immigrant. The illegal immigrant had a gun that had been stolen from a federal agent's car, I guess, uh, and the gun had been fired. The, the guy admitted to killing the girl. The only question was, did he do it, was it an accident, or did he do it on purpose, or was it criminal negligence? So he was charged with second-degree murder. The jury also could have found for involuntary manslaughter that was on the table as well. It seems to me that second-degree murder was too high a charge, and that involuntary manslaughter seems like the, the situation that best fits the evidence. This may be a case, to, to give the best gloss on the jury, this may be a case where the jury was basically thrown off by the prosecutor's failing to, to press the charges properly. That's, that's a possibility here. Uh, and I'll explain why in just a second. So here is what is undisputed. On July 1st, 2015, Kate Steinle was fatally struck in the back by a single bullet as she walked on Pier 14 with her father to view the San Francisco Bay. Uh, Jose Inés Garcia Zarate was a Mexican citizen illegally in the United States, and he fired the gun that killed Steinle. So first of all, for political reasons, it doesn't matter whether the guy was convicted or not. This guy should not have been in the United States. He had been deported, I believe, six times, five times before for seven separate crimes. If the man had been a citizen in the state of California, he probably would have already been in jail for life because there's a three strikes law in the state of California. Mostly it involves violent crime, not drug offenses. But the idea that he would have been out on the street is absurd. He would not have been out on the street if he'd, he'd been convicted of a bunch of different felony drug offenses. He would be in jail right now. Uh, he would not be out on the street if he were a citizen. So he actually had the special privilege of being deported, then recrossing the border, coming back. And then, you recall, he was picked up on a drug charge by the local authorities. The feds found out about it. They asked the local authorities to hold him so they could come get him. And because San Francisco is a sanctuary city, he was then released into the general population as well, where he got a hold of this gun and killed Kate Steinle. Now, was this a murder or was this an involuntary manslaughter, I think is an open question. It's pretty clear to me that this was an involuntary manslaughter. I'll explain to you why in just a second. I'll give you all the legal breakdown, putting on my lawyer hat. But first, I want to say thank you to our sponsors over at the USCCA. So according to the U.S. Department of Justice, over 34,000 carjackings happen every single year. Do you know how to protect yourself and your family? Do you know when it's actually legal to draw a gun? Well, the self-defense experts at the USCCA created a free video series to show you exactly what to do during a deadly carjacking, but it's only free for a limited time. Don't be a victim. It's great. It gives you all the information that you need. Go to DefendMyFamilyNow.com for 100% free instant access. That's DefendMyFamilyNow.com for 100% free instant access. The training videos show you how to use cover, how to get your gun on target, how to turn the tables on any attacker in under two seconds. You'll need more than basic skills that you've learned at the range if you actually want to be able to defend yourself. That's why you need to go over to my friends at USCCA and get the training you need. Take advantage of the free training. It's free, but only for now. So go to DefendMyFamilyNow.com for 100% free access. 100% free access, defendmyfamilynow.com. This ends really soon, so do it now, defendmyfamilynow.com. All righty, so the, here, is the, here is the case for the defense. So basically, what happened is that this piece of garbage illegal immigrant, um, and he's not in a piece of garbage because he's an illegal immigrant. He's a piece of garbage who is an illegal immigrant. Uh, he was walking around on the pier, and he has the gun. The defense says that he found the gun on the pier. Okay, this is like the lamest excuse ever. How many times have you been walking around and just find a gun lying around? You're, you're walking around and boom, look, there's a gun. Okay, this, it never happens. And the idea that this happens in San Francisco on a regular basis is insane. San Francisco has some of the tightest gun laws in the nation. So he, he says that he's walking around, he finds a gun, he picks it up, he goes, hey, a gun! He picks it up, and then magically the gun just goes off. It is clear from the evidence that the bullet hit the cement before it hit Steinle. So it wasn't like he picked up the gun, aimed it at Steinle, shot her in the back. Okay, he, he picked up the gun, he fired it, it bounced off the concrete, it hit Kate Steinle in the back, it killed her. Uh, and the, the defense was that he basically, that he's a moron, that basically he was walking around, hey look, a gun, he picks it up, it goes boom in his hand for no reason at all, it's, it's just a pure accident, the bullet bounces, it skips off the concrete and hits Kate Steinle in the back and she dies. The problem with this particular theory is several fold. One, the gun had been missing for four days from a federal agent's car. Somehow it just winds up in the hands of this illegal immigrant. Criminal, repeat criminal, it's just magic. It was like a normal person who found it on the boardwalk over at the San Francisco Pier. It wasn't me. It wasn't you. It was an illegal immigrant who's been deported five times. Right? Just magically. Amazing how that works. He picks it up. They, they question him. And during the questioning, he says that he was trying to fire it at the seals. 
that he saw a sea that he saw a seal out there or a sea lion. And he was trying to fire it at a sea lion, and then his story changed, and he said that he had that it fired by accident. According to <clears throat> according to the San Francisco Chronicle, defense lawyer said the shooting was an accident that happened when Garcia Zarate, who had a history of drug crimes but no record of violence, found the gun wrapped in a T-shirt or cloth under his seat on the pier just seconds before it discharged in his hands. Because that's what I do when I see like a bundle of, of cloth under my seat at a public pier. I reach down and I start investigating, and if I find a gun, I go, "Ooh, a gun!" Okay, Matt Gonzalez of the Public Defender's Office said his client had never handled a gun. Yes, I'm sure, and was scared by the noise, prompting him to fling the weapon into the bay. Okay, so number one, if you accidentally fire a gun, so apparently he says he was scared by the noise. It wasn't that, it wasn't that he shot the woman and then thought that he would be convicted of it, and so he threw the evidence away into the bay. Instead, he took the gun and he threw it in the bay because he was scared by the noise. That's what I do. When my child scares me, when my child makes a really loud noise and we're by the ocean, I just take my kid and fling him in the ocean. Let me just tell you, this is, this is something that normal people do on a regular basis. Oh my God, a car backfired. Let's drive it into the ocean. That's, a, that, that's something that you, you're scared of the fight. Oh my God, a gun made noise? What, what is this boom boom stick? Okay, during the trial, jurors watched video from Garcia Cerati's four-hour police interrogation in which he offered varying statements about his actions on the pier. Number one, when someone constantly changes their story, that's a pretty good indicator they're not telling the truth. Okay, at one point, he said he had aimed at a sea animal. At another point, he said the gun had been under a rag that lay on the ground near the waterfront and that it fired when he stepped on it. Gonzalez said it was clear in the video. By the way, guns don't fire when you step on them. Just note to everybody, you know, there are people who are saying that it was a Sig Sauer and that this is a Sig Sauer with, um, with a, a quick trigger because it was basically set up for a federal agent who knows how to use it. It only had four pounds of trigger pressure. Okay, even if it only has four pounds of trigger pressure, you can't step on a gun and it fires. Okay, as a typical rule, that is, it, it's extraordinarily rare. Like, something has to actually push on the trigger in order to make the gun fire. That's not how guns fire, unless the, unless the, the, uh, the hammer was already cocked or something. Gonzalez said it was clear in the video that he, had not, that he did not fully understand what the officers were asking through an officer's Spanish translation. Well, that's sort of his problem. I mean, they're speaking Spanish to him. It's not like they're speaking English and he doesn't understand. Grainy fo surveillance footage taken by the camera positioned a quarter mile away showed that just before Garcia Zarati took a seat on the pier, a group of six people gathered at the spot. Gonzalez said it was possible those people had discarded the gun that killed Steinle. Yes, I'm sure that's what happened. Six people just gathered and decided that instead of throwing the gun in the bay to discard the gun, which is five feet away, they decided what would be better. I, we need to get rid of this gun. You know what we'll do? We'll just leave it lying around. Best idea I've ever had. We're not going to take this gun, toss it in the bay? No. We're just going to leave it right here for some poor, unsuspecting illegal immigrant to find and randomly shoot a lady. Okay, so Steinle was not hit directly, but rather the bullet hit the concrete ground and ricocheted up to hit her. The gun was a Sig Sauer, had been stolen four days prior. The defense also presented evidence that the Sig Sauer has a propensity to accidentally fire. So it has a hair trigger in single action mode. Apparently, among well-trained users, it has a lengthy history of accidental discharges. Okay, accidental discharges does not mean that you have not acted with criminal negligence. If you pick up a gun and you point it anywhere near the vicinity of people and your hand is anywhere near the trigger, that does not count as a pure accident, okay? A gun is a dangerous weapon. Everyone knows this, okay? This is why you are taught when you buy a gun, when you train with a gun, you are taught never point the gun anywhere you are not willing to kill somebody. Never point the gun anywhere you're not willing to destroy. Never have your finger anywhere near the trigger if you don't mean to fire it. Okay, but the idea is that, again, this guy's a dunce, and he walks up, and he doesn't know what a gun is. It just looks like a fancy, a fancy cheese cutter, and he picks it up, and then, boom, it goes off in his hand because he never even touched the trigger. Okay, this is, so they, they say that this is the defense presenting a reasonable doubt case, and they said he's a homeless illegal immigrant, unfamiliar with the gun, and that's why. Okay, so I think that what happened here, if you're trying to make the best case for the jury, is that there was a prosecutorial overreach. So they pushed hard for a first-degree murder verdict or a second-degree murder verdict, which, which suggests that you must have intent, right? That, that you have to have intent to have killed. Involuntary manslaughter does not require intent. So the, the, the prosecution in this case said that he was playing like a game of Russian roulette in his head and just shot the lady. That's weak. What they should have charged was involuntary manslaughter. They overcharged, which a lot of prosecutors do. They overcharged. What they should have done is charge involuntary manslaughter Second-degree murder in, the, in California is willful, but not deliberate. Like, for example, you fire a gun into a crowded room. You don't mean to kill any specific person, but you know there's a good possibility somebody is going to die. Willful, but not deliberate. In involuntary manslaughter in California, the standard is without malice, without intent to kill, with reckless disregard for human life. So the difference between involuntary manslaughter and excusable accident is participation in either an unlawful act not amounting to a felony, so that would be picking up an illegal gun, or a lawful act involving a high degree of risk of death or great bodily injury. That would involve picking up a gun and pointing it anywhere in the vicinity of people. 
And in fact, there's a law firm out here in California that has a defense law firm that has a very good rundown on this law. And the exact example they use of involuntary manslaughter is a woman who's in a fight with her husband, brandishing a gun at her husband. The gun accidentally goes off and kills her husband. Right? That falls under involuntary manslaughter. Okay, Jeff Sessions has a statement on this was clearly involuntary manslaughter. The jury could have found that. It's possible they decided to just throw out everything because the prosecutor didn't do their job. But whatever it is, this is an unjust verdict. The guy should be in prison for a very long time for at least involuntary manslaughter. And beyond that, the reason this is a political issue is because this bastard never should have been in the United States in the first place. He should not have been here. Now, President Trump, when he says we need a wall, the reason we need a wall is because it's not enough to just repeatedly deport people. You actually have to have some way of preventing them from recrossing into the country because you have sanctuary cities, you have places where these people can hide. You know, Trump uh, should be making hay while the sun shines out of this because he is right. This is why Trump won. It's because of issues like the Kate Steinle issues I said last night on Fox News. Jeff Sessions, issue, the, the attorney general, issued a statement. The feds may bring charges of their own. Uh, Jeff Sessions said, when jurisdictions choose to return criminal aliens to the streets rather than turning them over to federal immigration authorities, they put the public safety at risk. San Francisco's decision to protect criminal aliens led to the preventable and heartbreaking death of Kate Steinle. While the state of California sought a murder charge for the man who caused Ms. Steinle's death, a man who would not have been on the streets of San Francisco if the city simply honored an ICE detainer, the people ultimately convicted him of felon in possession of a firearm. So again, once you're a felon in possession of a firearm, if that firearm goes off and you kill somebody, it's pretty hard to see charging and convicting someone of uh, felony possession of a firearm without also charging them with and, and convicting them of involuntary manslaughter in a case like this. The Department of Justice will continue to ensure that all jurisdictions place the safety and security of their communities above the convenience of criminal aliens. There should be blowback on sanctuary cities. Uh, and it shouldn't have to do anything with the, with the verdict here. If the guy was convicted, there should still be blowback on sanctuary cities. So that's, that's worthwhile noting as well. Okay, so that is big piece of news number two. Okay, big piece of news number three is that Mitch McConnell is now saying that the Republicans have the votes in the Senate for this tax cut. So I'll, get, I'll give you the